So today I'm taking over the Padres who have kind of put themselves in a tough spot. They're technically still not out of the playoff race with only a couple games left of the season, but they need a lot to go their way. And if they don't make the postseason, really the only thing that's keeping them from being the number one disappointment in all of baseball is the Mets who have been out of the race for quite some time. When you spend that kind of money, you make the trades that they've made, you'd fully expect for them to be a playoff team no matter what. And yes, injuries have happened, players have underperformed, but that's where management has kind of let this team down, where they've gotten a group of like, five six seven players that are really really good but outside of that the depth is really lacking within this team there's also reports of unrest within the squad because of big personalities starting to clash and this upcoming offseason there have been reports that they're looking to only spend around 200 mil in total for the payroll which the reported payroll for next season is around 160 mil so it doesn't leave them a lot of room to work with and when you look at the upcoming free agents you've got Cy Young candidate Blake Snell you've got all-star closer Josh Hader you've got Gary Sanchez you've got Mike Walker, those were key pieces to your team this year and you can't really expect to bring them all back if you're only looking to spend around like 40 mil this offseason and you have to think that Juan Soto is going to make around 20 mil or more in arbitration so again not a lot of money to work so that's where I come in I'm going to fix this Padres mess let's go win the World Series all right so let's start in the offseason if the Padres make the postseason great I mean really the only thing that really saves their year right now is if they win the World Series which like I said, they could make the postseason, they could make that push, but who really knows? I feel like heading into the offseason, heading into the future, that's kind of where the real retool, rebuild, whatever it is, happens with this Padres team. Because like I said, I think they're in a really tough situation. So let's talk about the squad. Looking at the depth chart, we're about to lose three fifths of our rotation. And yes, there are a couple of young arms coming up, but I feel like you still need to try to figure out a way to possibly bring back Lugo, possibly bring back Waka. I don't know if Snell is going to be a possibility. I don't know if Josh Hader is going to be a possibility. And then looking at the offensive side of things, you've got a good one through five. You've got Kim, Tatis, Bogart, Soto, Machado. Outside of that, lineup looks weak. Bench looks weak. Not great. And if you look at the money, Machado's got a big deal. Bogarts, Musgrove, Darvish, Tatis, Cronenworth's making 10. Suarez, I know, did get an extension in real life. I'm not sure if this is 100% correct. And then I know Nick Martinez has an option for this offseason. So I don't know if the Padres would pick up that, but that's I, I might look to move him just because like if that I got to double check the contract, which I think it is an option. I don't want him on the team. So there's that. So we don't have a lot of money to work with. We aren't going to have a lot of money to work with moving forward. Realistically, with this Padres team, you either go over the luxury tax, which it doesn't sound like they want to do this offseason, or you look to trade away pieces that you can to possibly replenish some of that farm system or just get cheaper players. It's, it's going to be a tough spot. And I think that's kind of where it, this is a little bit of a retool rebuild because Padres, I feel like have gone all in but they didn't really do it well you get what i'm saying all right so talking about impending free agents blake snell i just don't see him as a guy that we can afford moving forward i just don't think we can i've offered him a qualifying offer which is a lot of money it's 19 mil but that's just just in case another team comes in with an offer for him same thing with hater hater really only wanted about 13 mil but i just don't know if i can afford him over a long term contract like four or five six years so i figured let's just offer him the one year 19 and see if we can work around that moving forward i've offered gary a contract as well and michael walker the rest of the guys i think we can we can kind of build the team without it's going to be tough but we'll, we'll see what we can do so let's head into the off season let's see how much money we really have you know after arbitration and tendered contracts which i'm not expecting to be a lot so let's see what we can do with this team so I'm tendering contracts, and this is where the issue arises. Um, I'm already over on my pending offers to my available budget. And obviously, I've offered those qualifying offers, which I didn't really want to do, but like I felt like was necessary just in case, you know, if we can get them back for one season, we'll, we'll be okay. But we're in a tough spot. And I looked up Nick Martinez's contract, and I looked up a couple other players, and there are some club options but there's also some player options nick martinez is the club option which i'm assuming the padres won't want to pay because i believe it's over 10 mil from what i saw um and then you have where is he matt carpenter's a player option i believe seth lugos was a player option as well so like we're we're in a tough spot because like i feel like we need to get rid of some of these contracts like you darvish probably should get rid of this contract 
Um, I don't know what team would be looking to take on you, Darvish. But if I could just open up the money, that would be great. Because, like, we just, we don't have money to spend. And, like, I could potentially keep Profar. I don't want to keep him for four years, though. So, like, he might be someone I look to move just because just I don't want to keep that contract for that long. But here's six mil that we could try to earn. Jake Cronenworth, honestly, for 10 mil, I feel like we could get someone a little bit better. Um, it's not that he's a bad player. I just feel like he could get better and save some money. So, like, we're at 15 mil. Just between those two players, we've got Nick Martinez. Robert Suarez probably isn't going to improve too much more. So, like, that's, like, another 17 mil. And then the starters, you Darvish, that's 18 mil. Like, if we get rid of some of these contracts, it gives me a little flexibility. Because right now, I don't have much to work with. All right, we're going to the Braves. I don't like the trade in terms of like what we're getting back, but it's a huge salary dump with Nick Martinez and Matt Carpenter. We're getting Aguilar, Sheffield, and Cody Whitley. And again, I don't, I don't like it, but you know what? We're opening up quite a bit of money, so I guess it works. All right, next trade again, not necessarily a trade that I really, really like, but I feel like let's let's just do it. The Rays are going to take Jake Cronenworth. We're going to get Garrett Clevenger, Clevenger, whatever it is. We're rocking with it. So, again, huge salary dump. I'm okay with that. I feel like pretty good. All right, so I need to show you the players that I drafted. We've got Lucas Dolan. We've got Mark Bradshaw. And then we have Alexi Valdez. Those are kind of the main ones there, right? So the reason I'm going to show you this is because I'm going to trade one of them because it's the only way that I can get rid of you Darvish's contract. And I'm going to send them back to the Rangers. They like to acquire older pitchers so we're gonna pick up andrew heaney uh, again i know it, it, it's it's just no it, it's not realistic at all it's <laughs> it's not a good trade at all but it's saving us six mil and it's also saving us for the future plus andrew heaney's on an expiring contract and i feel like you know what let's just make it happen so i do have to trade away jerickson profile for this and then i also do have to throw in alexi valdez so that's going to be the trade but again it, it at least gives us a little bit of money to work with right and i feel like i really really need that considering we're in a tough spot and i don't really like the trade i tried to find like other moves that i could do but i just i just didn't really find any so like i mean i'll double check but i just feel like that's the best move that i can make okay i actually found a different trade with the rangers they're willing to give me jose leclerc i do need some bullpen help so even though I probably could sneak in something else, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna take the trade. Jose Leclerc for you, Darvish. That's fine. Jose Leclerc is also on an expiring deal, so he will become a free agent after this year, but at least gives us a little bit more to work with. So now tendering contracts, I've opened up a, like 25 mil worth of uh, money to work with. <laughs> it's better than nothing. Oh, I wasn't done offering contracts either, so it's gonna be less than 25 mil okay off season talk after i figure out how much money we have about 20 mil um we do have money invested in snell and hater if they don't sign that opens up a little bit of money for us but at the same time i need to know if they sign or not because we have 19 for snell we have 19 for hater if they don't sign with us that opens up 40 mil 38 mil whatever um and it also changes who i target if i get snell i don't need a top of the rotation guy if i don't get snell I need a top of the rotation guy. If I don't get hater, I really need a good closer. But if I do get hater, I don't need a closer. You know what I mean? And it, and it really does help us out because that helps out the rotation. That fills that closer spot that I need. But um, also, if we don't get them, that opens up a lot of money that I can spend on this team. Lineup wise, I need to fill out the bench. I could really use like at least another bat that I feel comfortable putting in the starting lineup. And again, I only have 20 mil to play with currently. So we're in a tough spot prospects we don't really have one right now that could join the squad you know if you look at what we've got we've got Merrill we've got Salas we've got Snelling we've got Savala um, Espinoza is a player that I'm probably gonna look to flip for either a reliever or some sort of bat um, but right now we've got these guys we've got who else could we kind of keep an eye out for it Lesko Dylan Head and then I've made Bradshaw no longer a catcher because I just realized he was six foot five I made him a first baseman and we're gonna leave him there this is a guy that i drafted same thing with lucas dolan so there we go um same thing with alexi valdez those are all draft picks i'll even i'll even show you so you guys know about it so we'll go first year player draft first year player draft and where is he first year player draft 
first year player draft you, you guys kind of see the players that we've got so yeah it's it's a waiting game if i have the money to spend i'll spend it if not then i i guess i'm not going to spend a lot of money uh shohei signed with the twins i wasn't expecting that one that's a little interesting Otani to the twins okay okay so blake snell has decided to decline our qualifying offer so that does open up a little bit of money for us i'm okay with that josh Hader has also decided to oh josh Hader decided to accept the qualifying offer so i don't need a closer that one i'm okay with that one i'm okay with but the um the blake snell one I, I'm okay with that too. That opens up a little bit more money for us to work with, right? See, 38 for pending offers. Our available budget now is 77 million. That's huge. It's what accidentally skipped it, but Blake Snell also went to the Twins. This rotation is disgusting. Sonny Gray returned. Blake Snell, they've got Chris Paddock, Otani, Joe Ryan, Pablo Lopez, Bailey Ober, Tyler Maley. How many starters do they need? That's what, eight? that's ridiculous and all of them are like so like chris paddock just came back in real life but like how many starters do you need first season time let's get to the regular season i i mean i want to extend soto's contract the thing is i'm so worried about budget wise moving forward oh oh wow i've opened up so much money i've opened up so much money holy cow Oh, I've, I think I've opened up like 20 mil each year. That's huge. We've got a lot of players coming off contracts this year. I'm I'm extending the contract. Yeah, like this is a this is a guy that needs to stick around for the the whole the whole shebang. You know, there we go. We got him signed up. Everybody else. Yeah, we're basically back to where we were like last year. So gonna be in a similar situation where money's gonna it's gonna be tight. But you know what? At least we're able to keep Soto. And we can kind of build with this team. So now look, let's let's see where we're at money-wise once the season starts. We have four mil in budget. So somehow we we stayed within budget, and this is the team that we're rocking with. We've got Kim, we've got Tatis, Soto Machado, Bogarts. We got Gavin Sheets on a two-year club option. The White Sox did not bring him back, which I can kind of see why, but at the same time, they had arbitration, so I don't know why they didn't sign him back. But we're gonna bring him in, he's gonna help us out for some righties. I brought in Candelario from the two-year club option as well. Was okay for this, the Cubs last year, but um, you know what? We'll see what he can do for us. He's going to play first base. And then we've got Campusano, and then I signed Ortega, Rafael Ortega. I'm not happy about this signing. It's just, at the time, didn't have a lot of money to work with. This was before um, I knew about the Blake Snell decision, so I just signed him to a really cheap, one million dollar deal the righty numbers don't look too bad he's only gonna face righties and trent grisham sucks versus righties so there's that we've got aguilar on the bench we've got profar we've got guillorme honestly this was just a i need a backup shortstop signing guillorme one year two and a half mil um i was gonna sign in mundo sosa but he already signed with the team by the time that i realized i needed a backup shortstop so there's that so this is the team this is what we're gonna rock with versus lefties this is gonna be the lineup a couple changes um gary sanchez comes in to play dh candelario is still at first and then grisham comes in to face lefties as well so like i said the team looks better i honestly think this is a way better team we're currently ranked ninth pitching rotation Aranola was my blake snell replacement essentially what i did was i took the money that we had originally offered to snell and i threw it at nola I backloaded the contract, so hopefully he stays uh, at least 85 overall for the next couple seasons. I think this is a good pickup. Um, and then we've got Musgrove, Lugo, Waka, Julio, Tehran. I don't feel great about this one. Two mil. And then Luis Severino, who, again, don't feel great about it. Five mil. He'll be our long reliever. Potentially, he'll swap with Tehran. And then, as you can see, the bullpen. McClurk through the Darvish trade. Clevenger, Clevenger. We're going to call him Garrett. Through the... Cronenworth trade, Buck Farmer, Suarez, and then we still have Hader for one more season. Probably not going to bring him back after this year. And uh, yeah, that's the team. In terms of other guys, I don't really think I signed too many others to kind of sit in the farm system. Brendan McKay, but like, I'm not really too worried about that guy. He's probably not going to feature. Other than that, I think that's really about it. I'm trying to see if I signed anybody. No, not really. It's basically the Padres farm system still. So somehow did it somehow i feel like we made the team better and we opened up some money for the long run so that's the squad let's get through it
deadline i need some pitching help we're gonna go for the alec manoa redemption arc we're gonna trade espinoza rosario and murphy yeah I, I somehow swindled that move also the blue jays are like really bad um i'm gonna show you where are they they are 13 and a half games out of the wild card and in the east where are they they are currently 24 games out the yankees also doing pretty badly poorly i think poorly would be a better better phrase there or word so i'm gonna see if they have any expiring contracts here that i might be able to poach off them which i think glaber is but do i want glaber do i need glaber not necessarily um i don't want rizzo what about pitching wise do they have somebody that's about to become a free agent clay holmes it's pretty bad this year what about loisaga because i do need a pitcher i believe let's see here yeah, Buck Farmer is not really doing what I was hoping. So I actually am gonna I am gonna go to the Yankees. I'm gonna take Johnny Lasagna and hope that he can give us at least just like a little bit. Just give me a half a season. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Uh Jesus Aguilar, we're not using at all. So I'm gonna send I'm gonna give no, I'm just gonna send them. Let's send them maybe like Max Schrock. They don't want Max Schrock. What about I don't even know who I can offer. Azokar. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda want Azokar for next year. So I don't really want to trade him. What about Ornelas? We're close there. Okay, that works. I wasn't gonna use Ornelas. And then I'll just throw in oh, you know Sanabria. He's the man. He's not leaving. He's not leaving at all. Um, but I am gonna send, let's see, Harvey Marlin? I, I guess. I don't really want to get rid of a pitcher though. I like having those pitchers for the minor league roster. And I don't think I'm going to be able to make a move with like anybody else. So it might just have to be one of those pitchers. Oh, they want Lucas Dunn? Okay, they can do that. Ornelas and Dunn for Loisaga. Okay, that's the move. I was looking at the Twins because I noticed that they had kind of a crazy team. Look at this team. They, they raided the Rockies. And then they've called up Walker Jenkins already. This team is insane. Holy cow. Plus the pitching we've already seen. They're gonna be tough to beat, man. Especially in a couple seasons once everybody starts to develop a little bit more. I might raid them. They've got a couple guys that I might be just to help us out a little bit. Let's see. Do they have anybody doing well? Oh, Farmer? Like Polanco? I just need somebody off the bench potentially to take over for Candelario because he's just just not doing it for me. And then obviously Aguilar is not really doing much either. So I, I kind of need like a first baseman for right now. That's like super cheap, expiring contract. Honestly, I might send them Candelario just because technically a two-year deal. So what, what are the what are, where are the twins? Where are the twins? Let me let me go steal somebody really quick. Let's go to the twins and maybe Kirilov. Who's there's got to be one of them that's like not playing. Where is Larnik? He's playing too. What, is Kirilov playing a lot? I'll take Kirilov. He's played 38 games. I'm in. Do you, do you want Aguilar? What about Candelario? They'd be interested in Candelario. I also kind of want to keep Candelario though in a weird like, hey, he might be okay next year. So I don't know. Okay. Okay. We might, we might be onto something here. I think I'm gonna have to trade like, let's go with, there's gotta be some, man, I'm running low on players here. Holy cow. Let's, I guess we have to trade a pitcher. Let's go with, do you want him? Okay, we're gonna get Alex Kirilov. Sure. All right, after the deadline, this is currently the squad. It doesn't look great when you have every single pitcher as uh, are currently on a cold streak. Hopefully they turn that around. Severino got sent down along with Buck Farmer, but the rest of the team looks good. Our bullpen has been outstanding. Hader, Suarez, Clevenger, Leclerc, Barlow, Garrett, you know the name. Either way, it looks really solid. Even, um, Tehran, who was part of the rotation, hasn't been great, but I feel like he can do well in this spot. So we'll see how they move, like how they develop going forward. And then offensively, I think we actually done pretty well. Like I don't, I don't hate the pickups that we've done. I do still think center field is a little bit of a question mark, even though Ortega's having a good season. Um, I'm not sold on Grisham. So there's that. I do feel like our bench is pretty strong too. Like I actually like the team that we've put together. Um, but we do have some aging pitchers, so that'll be an area that we have to keep an eye on. Good thing we do have Snelling and Lesko to keep 
um, for the, or at least to have for the future. In terms of draft picks, this draft was very deep in terms of talent, a lot of high potential players, a lot of high rated players, a lot of high 60s, low 70 overall players. Like this is actually a really strong class and uh, we did well in the draft. So we actually might see a couple players in there, but you can see like a 70 overall, 88 potential, another 88 potential. We have 88 potential here, 80, 85, 82, like a lot of 80 potential players in this class 86 for this catcher 89 for this first baseman 90 potential here for this outfielder uh generational talent in babe benitez for the athletics who also got a couple other 80 potential players uh where else did i see a big name guy there was another like 90 potential player somewhere and i forgot where he went oh the nationals matt velasquez 71 overall looks really solid again like i said this was a really strong draft class like this is probably one of the strongest draft classes i've seen so i'm pretty happy with the guys we got but we also could have gotten some other ones like lincoln nesbitt went third round closer 84 potential so yeah like i said there's there's some really good pieces in this draft class and we ended up going with rick gorman who looks like he's about 35 40 but he's 18 65 overall We've got James Laird, who could potentially be our center fielder moving forward. Six foot three, 64 overall. Really good speed at 96. Really good contact numbers. I think this is our Trent Grisham replacement. And then we've got Ron Otto, who looks like he's about 50. Was part of a biker gang at some point. But um, yeah, honestly, pretty good stats there too. And then a couple 70 potential players. So I feel I feel pretty good about this one. Douglas Stoitz. Isn't there another another Douglas Stoitz in this class? Damon Stoitz, maybe they're brothers. Mississippi, where's ours from? Where is he from? Missouri, maybe like cousins or something. We'll, we'll go with that. Either way, not a bad draft, not a bad deadline. We're currently third in the division, 16 and a half games out. I think standings wise, we are second wild card spot and have two and a half games, two and a half game lead. So we do need to pick it up a little bit, but I feel like the trace that we did is it was good enough. So we are a wild card team. We will be taking on the Giants. I need to see this Dodgers squad because it's it's 112 games or something that they won. What they win? 112 games. Okay. Let's see what we've got. IKF. How much did he sign for? Because I was I was tempted. I was tempted. He signed for three and a half mil. Man, he, when I when I was trying to sign him, he wanted six mil, and he actually was pretty decent, like good enough where I think he could have helped us out. Ahmed Rosario went back. Jared Walsh hit 30, 22 home runs, 300. They got Brian Anderson hitting 300. Matt Chapman hitting two. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Uh, they just had every player do well, kind of like what the Dodgers do. But, yep, we finished second in the division, 21 games out. So, like, we weren't even close. And first in the wild card. So, it was respectable. Team rankings-wise, we were... 11th for batting average what, what about runs seventh so okay not terrible i definitely would like to be in that top five obviously the twins were third i'm telling you that twins team is crazy that's like the craziest twins team i've ever seen put together and then if we take a look at era we were seventh okay so not not too bad not too bad league leaders nola was the best uh for war and soto had the most walks and if we take a look at awards Tatis won a gold glove. Mookie Betts won MVP. You've got Otani who won it on the other side, which, I mean, pitching wise, he wasn't fantastic, but offensively, 53 home runs with 46 doubles and 13 triples. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Um, Walker Bueller and DeGrom were the two Cy Young winners. And the rest of the awards, anything standing out to me? Not really. Oscar Colas, rookie of the year. Pretty impressive season. And then you've got Kyle Lanzardo, who's now with the Pirates. All right. All right. So I'm going to fix this because I know it's going to be a mess. All right. Pitching wise, we have Tehran, who, you know what? Honestly, wasn't bad. We paid two mil. Like, he really wasn't terrible, especially for a guy that I really wasn't expecting too much from. He got the job done as our fifth slash sixth starter. You know, Scott Barlow was fantastic, is a free agent this year. I'm going to try to bring him back. It just really depends on if I can get him on a decent deal. Um, LeClerc was good was solid he is a free agent again we do have some impending free agents in this uh in this team but i feel like we can get these guys back on cheaper deals we can get them back or we can sign someone that's similar in terms of performance for you know 
a cheaper fee. That's really where I'm getting at. I feel like we've put ourselves in a situation where we can go out and get some free agents and uh, improve the team. So Garrett, solid. I'll take that. Luizaga, solid. Um, Suarez, really good. Really, really good. I'm afraid he's going to start to regress, but I still feel like we've got it locked down for him. And then Hayter, a four ERA is not great, but he is a free agent. I don't think I'm going to be able to bring him back. We'll have to wait and see. So there's that. Severino sadly just didn't put it together didn't put it together so I think uh his time with the squad is going to be done Snelling though I think Snelling's a guy that we can sneak into this rotation either for Lugo or Waka um, or a long relief spot so I we do have those guys coming up and then Lesko I might give like half a season in AAA maybe another full season in AAA but he also looks pretty solid so we do have a couple um, pitchers that we could just keep our eye on definitely help us out moving forward if we look at our starters Aaron Nola was just what I needed top of the rotation guy good ERA good whip Musgrove right behind him in the two spot pretty solid Seth Lugo was solid at 34 not going to be getting much better but he gave us the season that I needed got us to the postseason Waka not as good as last year but I'm okay with it and then Manoa He's a little bit of a project, but I think we can get the best out of him. So there's that. I do want to see what Snell did with the twins. So let's go, let's go take a peek and see what he did. 3E, 3A, 1 4 whip. Okay, not terrible. Would they pay him? I mean, honestly, not a bad contract. If I knew he wanted that, I wouldn't have offered him the qualifying offer. I would have just given him the contract. But at the same time, I'm, I'm okay with the move that we made. And then what about. Ronan Worth, we sent him to the Twins, right? Is he, is he still here? He is. He did not play a single game with the Rays. Did I say the Twins? I, I meant the Rays. And who else did we trade? Darvish. Darvish, Darvish, Darvish. He went to the Rangers and he was, he wasn't bad. Um, only started five games, but out of the bullpen, he was, he was pretty good. But I feel like we've got LeClerc who gave us a really similar um, season out of the bullpen. So I'm pretty happy with that. Profar, off the bench, not too bad. Grisham, only facing lefties, was actually pretty good. So I think that's what we're just going to do. Only face lefties for Grisham. Gary was all right. Candelario wasn't that good. We do have the option for five and a half mil. I might take it. And then Guillaume. Guillaume is like broken in franchise. He's always good. Um, Hassan Kim was solid. Um, the OPS dropped a little bit, but still a pretty decent season. Tatis. I need better from Tatis, like way better from Tatis. Soto was good. Machado was okay. Not great, but okay. So he's regressing apparently, which not not something I want to see. Um, Bogarts was good. Kirloff was good. Campusano was, was not bad. Actually, Campusano was really good. 300 average? Okay. I'll take that. Uh, Gavin Sheets was... 22 home run, yeah, like not bad. Like he's basically DH platoon situation, so I don't hate it. I don't hate it. And then Ortega was kind of insane. Um, I'm not gonna bring him back, but he was kind of insane. So we do have a couple guys to keep an eye on. Uh, Zavala's one. We do have Azulcar, who I think is gonna be our Ortega replacement, a little bit younger, pretty similar in terms of attributes. So I think we can we can rock with that. Jackson Merrill's a guy I definitely have my eye on. And also, we've got a couple others down here like Salas. So we'll see if they feature. But postseason time, where are we? Giants, who knows? I really don't know what to expect from this. Why is our lineups wrong? What's wrong with our lineup? All right, we'll go like that. And all right, there we go. Game one, we lose. Game two, we win. It comes down to Lugo versus Noah Syndergaard, and we win. So taking on the Dodgers, this is where things get a little dicey. Um... Do I just stick with this? I feel like I can't. I feel like I gotta go like this. And then maybe like that? Maybe maybe something like Waka's like the extra guy here. What does that do now? Musgrove is going game one. No, let's go Nola, Musgrove, Lugo, Manoa. Yeah, can I do that? Do I have enough? Yeah, that should be enough time for Nola to recruit his energy. We do win the second though. We lose that one and then we lose. Uh, that's understandable. Um, allowing 27 runs in the last two games though, not good. Especially with, holy, 
36, 36 runs plus five, 41 runs in a four game series. Yeah, that's, you're not going to win. You're not going to win if you're allowing 41 runs in four games. Um, the Braves defeat the Orioles. Um, who was the MVP for that one? Let's see here. Sean Murphy. All right. The Orioles made the World Series though. So a team to keep an eye on. Okay. I don't know what to do with this team moving forward. <laughs> um, definitely pitching. Pitching is an area we definitely need to work on. So Candelario, I'll take the option. Five mil, I think that's okay. I'm going to take this option for Gavin Sheets, one and a half mil. And then a lot of pitchers. Holy cow, a lot of pitchers. Gary, I think we're okay moving on from Gary. I'll sign a different backup. And then Hader, what's the qualifying offer? 20 and a half mil. He's going to take that. He's going to take that. What does he want as a contract? Eight mil? That's way better. Do I have the money to do it? I don't think I do. Because we're in a very similar situation to where we were last year. I got to offer arbitration. I got to offer contracts. Is it worth offering him a $10 million contract for four years when realistically he wasn't amazing, right? And Josh Hader always lets me down at franchise. Is it worth it? Okay, so one two three four four guaranteed players from my bullpen buck farmer makes it five if we count him and then two starters in lugo and waka plus Tehran. so i'm losing six seven like main pieces of the rotation and bullpen I, I feel like i'm in a really really tough spot here um i think barlow what is he gonna want five mil loisaga is gonna want about four mil. I don't really want to give Waka or Lugo another contract. Leclerc doesn't want him. Okay, he doesn't want a lot. I'll do that. Honestly, let's do two. We'll do a club option. And can I can I bump this down a little bit? Will he sign if I bump it down? Ooh, okay, so Leclerc, 100 percent Tehran, I don't really want to offer a contract to. Savvy, no. Buck Farmer, no. Yes, I I gotta offer some contracts. The thing is like just don't think it's a great idea actually if i can do nine mil for a season i think i'll take it maybe if i do so he wants more money as the seasons go up if i can get him for one year nine mil i think that's a deal compared to one year 20 mil is what he wants so i'm gonna do one year nine mil and we're gonna go 4.5 here barlow i'm gonna go we're gonna go two year club option I'll give him, ten, oh man, 10 mil. Let's go 10 mil there. And then I think those are the contracts. I don't like it. I don't hate it. So there's that. Did they all sign? They did not. All right. So we, we might be in the market for some pitching. So let's see how much money we have. Money wise, we've got about 50 ish mil to play with, which honestly, not too bad. Um, we do have three contracts that haven't been signed. Um, for bullpen, which is good. So at least we have that out there. So if they don't sign, we do have a little bit more money, which I think we have about, what is that, four? So basically 20 mil in terms of contracts that are out um, offered. So we, if they don't sign, we have a little bit more. So we'll have about 70 mil to work with if those players don't sign. So about the team, pitching wise, I think we go Musgrove or Nola Musgrove Manoa I want in the three spot and then Snelling I want in the or Manoa in the four Snelling in the five so I want a three pitcher also um, we do have Lesko who's right around the corner almost MLB ready so he'll be up so the thing is like pitching wise we might we might actually be okay so someone like a Waka someone like a Lugo that can give me one year maybe a little bit older, just someone that I can slot in that spot. Veteran will do good. I don't really want to get a long-term pitcher because I feel like we're pretty good. Like Nola's still young, Musgrove's still fairly young, Manoa's 27, Snelling 21, Lesko's 21 also. We also need bullpen help. We have two guys currently getting offers, two, 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 two three guys. So to actually, if they all sign, we don't, we don't need help. So there's that. Uh, lineup. I don't really know what to do with the lineup. Um, I guess Ortega, I didn't offer him arbitration. So uh, righty, a good hitter versus righties is what I'm looking for. And then the bench looks pretty good. 
backup catcher as well. So realistically, I think we can stay with within budget fairly fairly easily. So backup catcher, Gary again, uh, Mitch Garver I could go to, Tom Murphy cards. Okay, so there's plenty of catchers for a backup. And then relief pitching, plenty of relief pitch. Oh wow, actually a lot of relief pitching. And then like a fringe starter. Oh yeah. Oh, we're good. Oh, there's so many options. Is there anybody that's like offensively that I feel like definitely needs to join the team that like I should be like, ah, probably shouldn't pass up on this guy. Not really. Not really. Um, do I need do I need somebody to step in somewhere? Someone do we have someone that hits lefties well off the bench? Not really. OK. I could look for that. OK, I feel like we're, I feel like we're good. Let's get to season two. All right, season two, we've moved up, we're ranked sixth, and I feel like we've actually done a pretty good job. So pitching rotation wise, I went out and got Soroka. I don't necessarily like it, but he was cheap, 11 and a half mil. We've got a club option. And I thought, you know what? Didn't have the best of years last year, but maybe a little bounce back, help us out a little bit. I thought about going big, spending a little bit more money, but I thought, you know what? Let's save the money because like I said, we've got less go right around the corner. And I didn't really want to block him long term. And I feel like we also brought in Desclafani. So if need be, we can turn to Desclafani, who had a very good season last year. Am I expecting this type of return? No, I'm probably like three and a half ERA. It was nine and a half mil. Wasn't too bad at all. And I just felt like money wise, 20 mil for two pitchers that go right into our rotation. I think that's not too bad. I think that's pretty good business compared to like spending 20 mil on one pitcher i got i got two for the price of one uh bullpen wise it's gonna be the same i am worried we are gonna have some regression so i'm gonna keep my eye on the market see what kind of pitchers we can get if need be i did sign brandon fought he was available got him on a two-year deal so not too bad there and like i said we've got we've got some arms that i'm gonna keep an eye on so we'll see what happens here and you can kind of see what the the rotation or the rotation of bullpen is in triple a it's a little thin it's not great. It's not great. So there's that. Lineup wise, Carson Kelly, backup catcher, Jorge Soler. I've seen what he can do. He hits home runs like crazy for six mil. That's our new DH versus lefties. And then Grisham, Candelario, Guillaume still on the bench. And as you can see, the offense, the only change is Azokar is going to face righties. That's basically the Ortega replacement. Other than that, I didn't go too crazy. We are limited in the money, like I've said. So I'm just trying to find players that fit the the holes that we have and just kind of build off of that without going too crazy and going over budget and really handcuffing us so again we have about the same amount of money to work with next year it's going to be tough it's going to be tough i am spending more than what the padres said they would spend but you know whatever um we'll, we'll, we'll rock with it there um but we do have quite a few names that i got to keep an eye out for we'll see what happens i feel good about the team though i do we're ranked sixth offense looks good Pitching looks good. Let's finish off here. Oh, I forgot to point out, we are a couple games in the season. I found this guy, Ozzy Trejo in free agency. So someone didn't sign their catcher with a potential. So I'm gonna snag him. Uh, he looks pretty good. He's six foot five. Probably not gonna stay a catcher, but the power numbers look good. I think that, that was it. I think that was all I had to point out. So that you guys just didn't see him randomly pop up and like, hey, what happened to him? Or where'd he come from? Free agency. Um, outside of that, yeah, that's, that's the squad keeping my eye on a couple of these guys because they, they they might get into the team so we've actually surrendered our first spot in the west um we've, we've kind of cooled off a little bit a couple losses here and there dodgers have gotten hot and uh, yeah, we're only two games out though so it's not too bad offensively we look decent i'm actually pretty happy with the offense you can kind of see things look good right on the bench you know again things look good pitching wise um yeah not not great not great um yeah manoa's not not doing what i was hoping either yeah it, it's just not going well uh the bullpen though is, is doing enough uh but at the same time we need we need a little bit better so I, I we gotta we gotta go out and get some guys that's really what it comes down to um i don't think i want to change up the offense i feel like we're doing we're doing well enough we've got these guys developing let's give them everyday at bats and triple a we'll leave the offense the same Let's go bolster up this bullpen a little bit. Maybe try to find another starter and really get us moving forward. And uh, let's see, anybody anybody available here pitching-wise? Huh. Um, he is a free agent. That's a little worrying. Mitch Keller, I think, is also a free agent. He is. Uh, AJ Puck. 
Is he a free agent? Arbitration. Interesting. For a season, I'd be down. I'd be down. Penn Murphy. Okay. Okay. So I've got a couple others where it's like one year deals that I feel like I'd be okay with picking up. So I think I think if we're looking for something, Alec Manoa is really letting me down here. I was I was hoping he would at least settle around like a high three, low four, and we could work with that. But I don't I don't know what to do here. I feel like we're in a we're in a tough spot. We're in a really tough spot where I don't really want to blow up the rotation. But we definitely need better. So let's go find something. All right, Jerks and Profar is getting us AJ Puck. So there's a lefty for us. And then that means Garrett's going to be gone. I'm really just going to find another reliever. And there's quite a few that I can go and get. Not Penn Murphy. Not Castro. Ooh, hold on. How did he do last year? 31 innings. I know I get this guy a lot. But again, relievers are tough to come by. So like, I'm just going to get what I can. I'm not going to go too crazy. And let's see. Do they want any of these catchers here? There's got to be somebody that they want. Like, that works. All right. There we go. There's another reliever. Like I said, we, we, we got to make this team a little bit better. So, I mean, Suarez, I got to get rid of this contract. He's going to start to regress. If he's not doing well right now, he's going to start to regress. Do I package him with someone, see if we can get like a, a one-year starter? That might that might be the move. Um, Who, though, is the real question? Polisak? At least that could be like our long reliever if need be. I'm gonna do that. We're gonna we're gonna do that. So they can have Suarez gets us close, and then who else could I give you? Contreras. You can have Contreras. All right, that's the deal. That might actually be it. That really might be it. So I'm gonna go like this. How many options does he have left? I might just send him down for a little bit. Sounds crazy, but like we gotta do it. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. And bullpen. Honestly, it looks good like that. I'm okay with that. And then the offensive side of things I said has been really, really solid. I might go Desclafani instead of Plesak. Uh, Let's see. But those trades were good. I, I feel like we, we didn't give up too much. That was kind of the thing I was worried about. I didn't want to give up too much. Because, like, look at the bullpen. The bullpen's doing well besides those guys that weren't. We brought in AJ Puck, who I don't really want as our setup guy i don't want two two lefties back to back but we'll go like that rotation is still okay and then lineup wise it's it's good enough it's gonna get the job done issue is nola i wasn't expecting that from nola that that hurts let's finish off the season won the division 103 and 59 great season great season how did oh they were three games behind us okay so we're currently the fourth best team in baseball awesome love to see it League leaders wise, Joe Musgrove, that is what I was looking for. And then Soto had a great offensive season. In terms of team rankings, we were the best in terms of batting average, which is great to see. Runs the number one offense. And then if we took a look at pitching really quickly, let's get over there. We were the fifth best team in terms of ERA. So good, improved as a whole. Last year we were sitting around like top 10 in terms of offense, top 10 in terms of pitching. Now we're like one of the best teams in baseball awards mvp for soto okay mookie Betts and o'neill cruz also in the race and then otani won it on the other side okay cy young otani so he bounces back gets himself a cy young and then spencer strider wins it for the nl all right what else do we have any surprising winners of any of these awards okay so this was the guy that got drafted last year and holy cow he looks insane Okay, also, the Nationals drafted a generational talent in this season. So they've got two crazy outfield prospects in their in their farm system now. On top of Dylan Cruz, their outfield set for the next 20 years, it seems like. Um, so yeah, there's that. I didn't show, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you start of next year so that you guys can see them. Um, Richard Hartley was also a pick that the Angels had with a uh, 90 plus potential. He looks pretty good too. So yeah, they did they did pretty well. Our draft, don't worry about it. It was terrible. It was it was terrible. Don't don't worry about it at all. All right. So Desclafani got the ERA under four, solid. Love to see it, but not coming back next year. Uh, Manoa, like. Those per nines don't look bad. Yes, the walks per nine is bad. But, like, outside of that, I feel like he should be doing better. So, we'll, we'll have to figure something out. Scott Barlow is regressing. But, at the same time, like, 
looks okay. Like, he had a great season. Um, we have him for one more year, but if he's going to regress, like, I feel like maybe we don't bring him back. Leclerc, once again, was solid. I own, oh, I did give him a two-year club option. I might bring him back. I might bring him back. We'll see. Uh, okay, okay. Not bad over 11 innings. AJ Puck, though. I was hoping for a little better. And then Loisaga was good. And Hater was also good. Almost identical to last year in terms of like saves. Oh, actually, no, 49 saves. I read that as 39 per second. Hater, almost 50 saves. Nola got the ERA down to four, which is good, but he is regressing. So, yikes. Uh, not ideal. Uh, Musgrove was very good. Cy Young candidate. Was he a Cy Young candidate? Did he get robbed of a Cy Young candidate? Yeah, he wasn't even a Cy Young candidate? Huh. I mean, for a season like that, you'd think he would be, but I guess not. Uh, Soroka was solid. I think we could pick him up, you know, especially with Manoa being not great. Nola regressing. Soroka might be a guy that we need to keep a hold of. Uh, we do have an 11 and a half million option. It's not too bad. Polisak also kind of gives us a little bit of flexibility with the arbitration that we have. And then Snelling was good. He was really good. I'm, I'm happy with that. He's definitely a guy we need to keep into the rotation. We also have Lesko, you know, Dolan's progressing quickly. Bot is also still here. We've got Gorman. We also have Otto. So we've got a little bit of flexibility. So I'm not too upset with that, liking, liking what I'm seeing. Lineup wise, this is, um, Azokar wasn't, wasn't that great. Where is he? He was a little disappointed, unfortunately. But we do have Laird who could come up next year. I think he's definitely a guy that we need to get involved. Merrill's a guy that I feel like should uh, at least make the bench. Zavala, maybe not yet. And then Salas, I want to include him. It's just not yet. The hitting stats aren't there just yet. Carson Kelly is a backup catcher. That's fine. Those aren't bad uh, numbers at all. We've got Soler who hit 15 home runs off the bench. I'm happy with that. Literally the only reason I signed him to be a bench bat, DH, he got the job done. Candelario, solid. Love to see that. We've got Guillaume who wasn't as good as last year but at least you know as a bench bat good on base percentage and then if we take a look at our starters kim still really similar to what he did last year i'm not upset with that he, he's basically gonna put up these numbers so i'm fine with that we've got uh oh oh no he's one more year one more year on his contract tatis i don't know what's up with tatis what's what's the deal here why are we regressing Okay, all right. I guess we're just not gonna have a good Tatis. We do have a good Soto though, so I'm happy with that. Machado, better, way better. Love that. We've got Bogarts who's still putting up really good numbers: 40 doubles, 20 home runs, 15 home runs for Kirilov who hit 295 with a 372 on base percentage. Yeah, give me more of that. That's our first baseman right there. Campusano, a little regression, but like not too much. You know, as a catcher, I'm I'm pretty happy with those numbers, and he's improving. So like. I'm not looking for a catcher anytime soon. And then Gavin Sheets, yes. Yes, give me give me that, give me that, 100%. And then Grisham's gonna play the outfield and he's putting up really good numbers. He is a free agent, so uh, man, we might we might be in the market for a, a center fielder if need be. I know we have Laird, but um, we'll have to wait and see. So I think lineups are good, pitching is good. Let's get to the off season or the postseason. We're gonna be taking on the Phillies and we are through okay so now we're gonna be taking on the cubs who had the number one pick by the way the cubs had the number one pick so i don't know how they did that and are now in the <laughs> in the postseason let's move everybody up a spot and go from there and now actually you know what i might do let's go instead of please act let's go snelling and then we'll we'll see what we can do against the cubs here we lose the first but win the second Oh man, Snelling, keep us alive. Good. Police act. We lose. All right, comes down to Nola versus Ben Brown. We lose to the Cubs. Lose to the Cubs. Wins. Cubs World Series. It is going to be the Cubs winning the World Series. Who is the MVP? Miguel Amaya. Oh, okay. Christopher Morel had a postseason. Holy cow. I mean, the Twins, like I said, the Twins are going to be tough. The twins are gonna be tough. Okay, season three. I had I got a I got a little bit of a, a plan. I definitely do. I think we're we're gonna be moving in the right direction. So hater, I think we can get one one more year out of him. What's the qualifying offer? 21 mil. What do you what do you what are we doing here? Ooh, are we starting to hit the point where you want long-term deals now? Should I have traded him? Probably. Probably. How much money do we have? About a little bit more than usual. 
So Barlow, I'm going to reject it. Leclerc, 1.7 mil. I'm going to take that one. Um, I forgot to mention I did sign Kyle Farmer for the September like call-ups because I needed an extra bat. He only had seven at-bats. Had three walks, though. So there's that. Um, I'm not going to bring him back, though. Um, there's <laughs> So just, just so you know, he was with the team there. I am going to take this option because we need it. Uh, we need the offense or the pitching help and now i gotta figure out who i want to keep and who i don't want to keep because there's there's a couple interesting options here all right hater three years 34 mil we've got two years 24 mil for grisham it's way more than i want to spend but um he's been putting up pretty good numbers he's been playing 100 games like again it mm, it is a lot it is a lot but i feel like i was looking at laird and he is going to be in the team I just don't know if I can start him every game, you know, do what do I just do I save the money because like I'm looking at it. If we're going to lose Desclafani, right, we're going to still have Plesak, Nola, Snelling. So basically what I'm looking at is Plesak's probably going to come here. Manoa's going to slide in here, right? And then Desclafani has gone. We're going to lose a lot of our bullpen. I don't even know if I want to bring back Puck, to be honest. And if Hader comes back bullpen we're gonna lose a couple pieces but we should be okay maybe one arm needs to be signed rotation looks pretty solid and we also do still have lesko who i could turn to so it's one of those things where like we've got starters bullpen maybe one arm offensively i do need to sign candelario he wants about 10 mil for a season guillorme needs to be brought back if i want to so realistically guillorme could be jackson merrill i'm not gonna bring back solaire I think we've got the money to do it. I think I can afford to to do that. And then Grisham will face lefties, Laird will face righties, and then ju let's just spend the money on relievers. I think that's the move. So I think, I think, yeah, these four contracts that I have: Kelly for one year, Candelario for one year, Grisham for two years, and then Hader for three years. And then we'll let the the rest walk, and then spend the money on free agents and if they don't sign then we just go out and get none of them signed okay one of them signed one of them signed no yeah okay we'll see i i don't hate the team that we have right now but we uh we could be in the market for some some, some new players we'll have to wait and see budget wise we're over budget hear me out i went a little crazy i saw some players in free agency at the end of free agency that i was like i gotta pick them up they're way too good to not have on the team so with that being said, this is the squad now. It looks good. Manoa, if he doesn't do well, you know who we turn to? Dylan Lesko. He's right there. He's waiting for the call up. There we go. That's the squad. I mean, that looks strong. And then the bullpen, I brought in Jaime Berea. I brought in Lucas Sims. So those were the replacements that we got. And then we have a couple guys on waivers, but you can kind of see what I'm working with here. I actually think we've done pretty well with the squad like i said i did i did go over a little bit on the budget that's not great but for the next couple seasons we've got some money to play with so it's not like i've really handcuffed the team like you can go out and make some changes did i break the rule that the padres were only going to spend 200 mil a season yes 100 percent. but i want to win and uh the only way i can do that is if I, if i spend some money so there's that carson kelly's back candelario's back jackson merrill's in the team trent grisham's in the team but also Luis Arias is in the team. Um, yeah, I probably should start him. The thing is, where? Maybe a little platoon situation with Kim. Um, I feel that like that's disrespectful because Kim's been good, right? 340, 340 on base percentage, 270, 260, 60 year before. But I feel I feel like if we if we want to put the best foot forward, that's gotta be the squad, right? Um, Laird is gonna hit versus righties. Grisham versus lefties. I feel like that's that's just too good to pass up, right? The other player that was in free agency right before spring training started was Oscar Gonzalez. I got him on a cheap deal, one and a half mil. So if we need to turn to a new outfielder, this will be the guy that we go to. Other than that, like I feel like the team's in a really good spot. We're currently ranked third, first in contact, eighth in pitching. It's a good team. It's a good team. I, I think we've really made this team better. We've made it a little bit younger and I, I think this is a squad that uh should win a world series it should doesn't mean it will but it should the deadline pass i didn't want to make any moves because as you can see we're in first place but i did forget to show you the nationals outfield because it's absolutely insane so 
you know, like the infield's looking a little not great. They do have Eric Tomlinson where I don't know where he came from, but he looks really good. Really good. Still have Brady House. They signed Bo Bichette. They still have Abrams. And now this is where it gets crazy. This was the guy that they drafted last year who can somehow play catcher also, but he's a generational talent. So he's in the majors. You've got Elijah Green. You got Robert Hassel, Reynaldo Pena. Like, where are these guys coming from? Sean Silva. And then you've got Dylan Cruz. You still have these two down here. And then they have Matt Velasquez, James Wood, and Gustavo Orozco. Like, this team's outfield, unbelievable. Why don't you trade some of those prospects and prove the team a little bit? You know? Like, holy cow. Um, the only change that I made was Oscar Gonzalez got called up because he was um, doing way better than what Laird was doing, sadly. Just wasn't putting together the season I was looking for. And then pitching wise, I've moved uh, Steven Wilson up and Lucas Sims had like a seven and a half ERA. So sadly wasn't working. I'm also, you know what? Please hack is, it, he's not doing terribly, right? But let's, let's, let's turn to him. Dylan Lesko, he's been, he's been knocking on the door. He's been doing good enough to get a spot. I'm not gonna get a rotation spot. But we're gonna throw him in that sixth that sixth man long reliever spot and let's see how he does i mean we're ranked second we got the fifth best pitching team's looking good 99 63 won the division once again didn't win 100 games like we did last year but again really solid season musgrove once again held it down for the pitchers and soto with the batting average love to see it do we have an award that's like mvp or cy young a gold glove and a batting title so soto was third in the, in the MVP race, Pete Alonso with the Brewers, okay. And then O'Neill Cruz won it. On the other side, it was Brandon Lau, who beat out Vlad Jr. and Judge. McClanahan was the Cy Young winner, and Strider was the other Cy Young winner on the NL side. Okay, all right, who else popped off? Does he Guillaume with the Astros? Of course. Um, Whitlock, Alzali, Relievers of the Year. And then Sean Robles is the Rookie of the Year for the NL. And uh, Jamie Alonso, oh, it's probably Jaime Alonso good it's pretty good see potentials so probably not gonna do too much better um season one's generational talent babe benitez got his debut and wasn't great so there's that there's that all right so pitching wise what have they done here who did they send down let's take a look they sent down gonzalez was he bad yeah he was okay um do i just rock with grisham the whole time they also sent down carson kelly which okay i guess we can rock with Ethan Salas for the postseason just turned to the youngster right off the rip um I feel like I either want how was Laird I mean they basically were the same weren't they all right I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Laird I'm gonna go with Laird and we're gonna send down how was Lesko Lesko struggled all right we're gonna send down Lesko and let's see how he did. So 11 games, didn't start a single one, 26 innings pitched, didn't go great. The ERA is, is pretty tough. It is pretty tough. So it sucks, but oh well, we'll, 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 we'll be okay. We'll be okay. We've got Plesak here who held it down, did well enough, good to see. And that's good, that's good. Leclerc, how we looking? Not great, not great. Uh, also not ideal. AJ Puck was better. I like to see that. Steven Wilson came in, gave us nine innings, was good. I mean, Berea was like somehow the best pitcher that we've had on the entire team. And then I forgot to mention that we did resign Hader on a three year deal. As you can see, actually pretty friendly. If I would have known he just wanted 11 mil this whole time, I think we would have gone in. I think season one, he wanted like 13 mil or something, which I know 13 mil, 11 mil, it's not that crazy, but hey, uh, we, we kept him around <laughs> and somehow got a pretty decent deal like 13 mil over so what do we pay we paid 19 the first year and then it was like 10 and then nine we, yeah i guess we could have just paid them right off the rip and saved us some money huh bad business by me bad business by me all right so but josh Hader was really good love to see it all right let's take a look at our starters musgrove is regressing but again very good soroka was good love to see that honestly for 11 mil not a bad pickup nola again okay i'll take that got the era under four 1.1 whip love it manoa there we go i told you we'll, we'll bring him back and we did and then snelling a little bit of regression but not not too much where i'm like oh man gotta freak out about him 
pretty good. I'll take that as a starting five. Really solid. And then lineup wise, we're going to throw Laird back in. But we've got Kim, who only played 86 games, but again, still got on base at a pretty similar level. Candelario regressed a little bit, but also played in way less games. So the numbers still like, yeah, it's kind of tough when he really didn't play. Jackson Merrill didn't really play. Grisham was good, though. Once again, just got to have him face lefties. That's the way you're going to get the best out of him. Luis Arise got on base, just what I wanted. Fernando Tatis finally turned things around. He's been like our worst offensive player for the last two seasons. Finally put up a good year. Soto, crazy numbers. Machado regressed a little bit as he's getting older. You kind of expect that. But like his numbers are going up. It's just production wise, he kind of regressed. Um, Bogart's still putting up like quietly really good seasons. Kir Kirilov, 380 on base percentage, which is awesome. Campusano. This, it seems like this is kind of what to expect right here. These two seasons right here. And then Gavin Sheets. I feel like this was an underrated pickup too. Normally he doesn't do well. So for us to get a good Gavin Sheets the last two years, I'm pretty happy. And then James Laird, 100 games. Didn't do that great. So I'm hoping a little playoff magic. Who are we going to face? The Dodgers. All right, let's take a look. Let's see what these Dodgers got. What has changed? Let's see here. Brandon Drury starting from? Okay. It just looks like like players are getting older. That's really about it. I mean, pitching wise, Freed has joined their team. I mean, yeah, it just looks like the team's gotten a little bit older. So like things just haven't been as good. So I'm feeling good about this. Like I feel like we should win. All right. So can we actually win it though? All right. Just auto fix the lineups. We win four to two. We how do how are we losing here? Like what is going on? We should be we should be winning. There we go. We went through all five pitchers, but we got it done. Phillies now. They do have Zach Allen. I did just see that. But what is the rest of the team's looking like? Okay. 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 Yeah, that's a pretty good one through five. Aiden Miller. Like, okay, so one through five looks pretty good. Bottom half, not as crazy. But Gallon, Painter, Wheeler. Yeah. Again, it's going to be pretty solid. It's going to be a pretty good team. All right. All right. I mean, I feel like this art, the team that we put together is better. But it doesn't mean we're going to win. We are up 2-0, though. No. And 3. Snelling? Come on. Don't don't reverse sweep us. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're taking on the Guardians, who beat the Twins. The, the Twins almost made it in back-to-back -back years. All right. So, Lair joined them. How did he do this year? 30. He only gave us... Okay. Half the game, so. So, okay. Half the games. If we would have given him a whole season, probably 30 home runs. So, okay. I understand that. Christian Walker... Tamar Johnson, how'd they get him? Let's see what their pitching's looking like. Bieber, McKenzie. Okay, so this is this is the uh they picked him up. He wasn't he didn't even pitch for them during the regular season. But this is just the Guardians pitching staff and then the offense with Soler Walker. Uh yeah, a couple changes, but I don't know. I feel I feel good about it. Soroka starting game one. Wait, Soroka starting game one. Hold on, hold on. Soroka, okay, I see where we're at. All right, so Soroka, Nola, and Nola's struggling. Musgrove's doing really well. Snelling's not. So may maybe. Whoa, you know what? Let's do let's do that. Let's do that. I think that's what I want. Anybody that I might need to swap it out for the the lineup. Let's see. Anybody doing poorly? Yeah, let's get Laird out. Grisham's only had four at bats. Let's at least give him another at bat or two. And let's see what we can do with that. I feel like we should win. Like, looking at their lineup compared to our lineup, I feel like we're the stronger team. All right, World Series. Let's start it off right. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay, 3-2. to two. That's not bad. That's not bad. Musgrove, 3-1. to one. All right. That's that's better. We still haven't scored as many as they did in game one. But you know what? We're, we're getting there. Nola wins it. We're one away. We're going to give it to Snelling. You know what? A little homegrown situation there. We are away. But Snelling, take the mound, lead us to victory. And let's rock with this. Man, Grisham doesn't have a hit all postseason. What are we, who are we facing pitching wise? We are facing Tristan McKenzie. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's go with Laird. I have, I have a good feeling Laird's going to deliver for us. So that's a good start. Oh man. Right off the rip like that. Just like that. Two runs right off the rip. Oh, five runs right off the rip okay oh okay not great not great all right that's let's calm it down 
let's 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 calm it down seven run first inning not what you want to see um well i mean seven runs in total two from them we we, we would have liked to keep it at a five nothing game but snelling we need you to lock it in here and our offense needs to there we go that's what i'm looking for we're, we're just hitting all types of home runs today we're all 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 over the place i love it love it a double and soto strikes out that doesn't happen that's that's a lie a sack bunt interesting move there a sack bunt huh really that's that's what they turn to in that situation double play it's still eight to two snelling has definitely kind of locked in found his rhythm slowed down a little bit laird is on base i'm definitely stealing second we're gonna make that happen and then a rise brings him in with a single just like that that's exactly what i was looking for and snelling's gonna come out um you know what i'm, I'm gonna let him pitch versus the lefty actually they bunted again what is what are they doing another bunt let's go with let's go their former pitcher against them and he gets the out just what i needed we're through six nine to two things are looking great and any other offense no i'm, I'm feeling good though i'm feeling like a triple oh okay strikeout perfect still nine to two i mean the team is the team is just making it easy another error for laird how is he getting on base so easily with these errors both times he's gotten on base it's because of the error both times he's stolen second and then i was gonna say both times arise brings him in on a single but sadly arise didn't do that for me which is super disappointing but again another another solid inning there by trevor steven or stefan whichever you prefer whichever it is let me know but here we go let's get in let's get 10 let's get 10 let's close it out we're not going to but trevor's going to close it out here i feel good okay we're not going to let him close it out we are going to turn to let's go I, I don't need hater we're going to go puck he's going to get that out there and there it is the padres won the world series tatis delivers with a home run two rbis and two doubles and the squad got it done. Nine runs. Our MVP was Luis Arise. And the playoff MVP was Gavin Sheets. Okay, eight RBIs for him. Arise was good. Kirilov was good. And if we take a look at the team as a whole, yes, Snelling struggled a little bit, but that final game held it down, allowed only two runs. Soroka, okay. Manoa, hey, you know what? For him, him to go where he was that first season, we got him to what he did for this final year super happy musgrove was fantastic nola was good and honestly unsung hero for this rebuild was the bullpen yes we had to switch it up a little bit but no matter who we brought in they were always really really solid so like i'm really happy with what we did there and offensively i know we had like the core of tatis soto machado and bogarts but like campusano was really good kirilov we got him he was good Gavin Sheets, low key, kind of nice. Um, Trent Grisham. If you told me Trent Grisham was gonna hit, you know, at a like a 370 or above on base percentage, I would have laughed. I would have laughed. I honestly thought I was gonna get rid of Trent Grisham right off the rip. But the fact that he was a key piece, yeah, he sucked in the the World Series slash postseason, but he got the job done. And to be honest, we we did really well with this team. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And of course, check out this video right here. I definitely think you'll like it and hit this button to subscribe. Catch you in the next one. Peace.